Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day Trivia. We are going to have some fun today. I have been on a fairly indefinite hiatus and I apologize for disappearing like that. Uh, turns out uh, the plague finally made its way into my house and I feel pretty much fine at this point. Today's the first day I feel pretty much fine after two weeks. Uh, no worries, we're all good here. Uh, just can't seem to kick it. Uh, the problem is, as you may have seen last week, I had a tickle in my throat. And if I talk too much, I would cough. And that is not appealing when people are watching you on a video. So, uh, no worries. <laughs> We're all good here. That being said, I don't have, haven't put out any emails or any new founders in two weeks because I was hurting there for a minute, as you might imagine. Uh, with that being said, I don't have a week in review uh, roundup that we usually do better. Hi, Nick. Yeah, I'm going to be fine. Well, we're going to be okay. Uh, it's just, you know, the tickle in my throat would have me coughing every time I talked. And that would just not be fun for you guys at all. Uh, that being said, I, I a little bit shorter of a trivia this week. But it's been this like three weeks since I've done a trivia. So I'm embarrassed. Uh, and I apologize. And I miss you guys. Uh, so we're going to do it. It's a little bit of a generic trivia this week. Uh, most of it should be fairly easy. I threw in some curveballs in there. But that being said, uh, let's have some fun. Also, I was supposed to get a haircut the day I got COVID. <laughs> so forgive me for looking terrible. My beard's finally coming back. So there is that. Uh, and I do appreciate you guys coming back and waiting around for me because, you know, usually if someone disappears for two weeks on YouTube, you never hear from them again because the algorithm doesn't give a hoot. So I appreciate you guys coming back so quick. So let's have some fun. Keep it a little casual this week. Don't have a collar on. Uh, let's do that trivia. So we're going to pop over here. Question numero uno. What was the title of Thomas Paine's pamphlet which encouraged independence? I, I forgot to pull up my uh, switcheroo here for the timer. Timer. Games. One minute. Go. Okay. So we're already in here. And you guys should know the answer to this question. Uh, Thomas Paine. Pretty famous author of the revolution. He uh, had some famous works. And one of which... His most famous is what we're looking for here. It was written in January of 1776, just as things were getting a little heated with the Americans and the British. Uh, the war had already been going on for almost a year, about 10 months at that point, and it was time for independence, and many people were beginning to feel that. Thomas Paine was able to put it into words uh, in a better fashion than almost anyone. I do see Nick popping up with an answer here, but I see a few other people hanging out, and we will be happy to wait for your answers. Uh, though, I understand some people just like to watch. Maybe they'll join us when we get to our declaration signers rundown as we like to do after question numero five and i did take me a second to get this uh, the timer started so i will come up and acknowledge nick you are absolutely right it is common sense an american classic uh thomas Paine, known for many things uh he would later write the um uh the crisis which was a series of articles uh written to kind of bolster the troops. That's where he has his famous line, these are the times that try men's souls. Ooh, tear to my eye. Uh, with that being said, he would later go on and help start the French Revolution and then write The Rights of Man, which was really important, uh, liberal document at the time. And I, I mean it in the old-timey Republican sense when I use the word liberal, not the modern politics sense. Uh, he would also be very criticized by a lot of people for talking a lot of trash about uh, organized religion at a time where that just was not done. Let's continue, though. This one, another one, I feel like should be, you should probably know. Uh, who said, give me liberty or give me death? Uh, one I thought I'd throw out there. I see someone threw me a like. So if you guys want to throw likes, uh, that always helps, especially since I have not put out videos in several weeks. It's definitely going to hurt me in the algorithm. So giving me some likes would be real helpful to get the channel back on track where it was a few weeks ago and where it will continue to be to the distant future. Thank you so much, guys. With that, I have not seen anyone throw an answer in yet. Oh, Yellow's coming in with one answer. That's definitely an American founder. Is that the right one? I don't know. I do know I wrote the questions down, but we're letting other people throw out some answers. Got 27 seconds left for that. While we do, I will explain that this was said just before uh, uh hint hint it was in virginia uh it was at one of the virginia conventions i believe it was the second or third virginia convention leading up to the revolution and this was before the war broke out and uh the answer to this question said things that were pretty intense including give me liberty or give me death to which many people in the audience said treason 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 and that's the time and it is patrick henry that's what he's most famous for uh other than uh, refusing to go to the Constitution, Constitutional Convention, and instead saying, I smell a rat. <laughs> um, 
with that being said, uh, yes, Enrichment, that's right. Hi, Players with Squirrels. Welcome to the channel. I have not seen that awesome name before, so thank you for joining us. Uh, yes, it is. It was in what? Uh, was it in Richmond? Had they moved to Richmond? That is a great question because the capital was in Williamsburg at the time. It wouldn't permanently move to Richmond until after that, but this was the time during, uh, well, when this kind of talk was treasonous. So it may have been in Richmond. Uh, thank you, squirrels. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I never considered it. I will confirm for next week, <laughs> um, unless you can right now. Question the next going north. Who was the leader of Vermont's Green Mountain Boys? Again, we're doing a little bit more general takes this week, getting back into the flow of things. Uh, I oh, should also announce that I am going to be doing a uh, another live stream tomorrow to make up for time I've missed. We're going to talk about America's favorite traitors. I am going to have the best treasoners in American Revolution history. Uh, Audrey, welcome. I just got a Patrick Henry t-shirt. It has his image and the quote on the shirt. Oh, well, then you should have definitely gotten that answer right now, shouldn't you? <laughs> That's amazing. Let me know where you got it from. Speaking of which, I do have some merch in the link down, down below. Just a few things I wanted to see on some t-shirts, so I put them on there. Uh, I actually have a few more coming out pretty soon, so keep an eye out for that. I uh, haven't had time to do it this week. As I said, if you're just joining us, I just got through COVID. <laughs> it was not great. I'm not going to keep harping on it, but I do want to justify my absence to everyone. And no one's throwing out an answer to the Green Mountain Boys here. Plays with squirrels. Daniel Morgan should be more confident. Good question. Nick, just as time elapses, it was Ethan Allen. Daniel Morgan is a good answer. Uh, Daniel Morgan is known for his rifleman in western Pennsylvania and Kentucky, uh, he would end up going up north around Vermont uh, and actually join the campaign to uh, Quebec at that point. So I could see how you would confuse the two. Uh, Dane Morgan is a, a, great, a great American, though. Don't want to leave him out. Moving on a little bit now. On what date did the Continental Congress vote for independence? And this is a little bit of a tricky question. But it's a really important one to know and remember. Uh, Ethan Allen's brother, Ira Allen, uh, Nick, was a leader of the American Revolution and the v Vermont's movement for independence. Uh, he was in the Green Mountain Boys for a time, but I would not consider him a leader of the Green Mountain Boys. When the Green Mountain Boys went out to fight, he stayed home and helped found Vermont. Uh, and was he wasn't a governor of Vermont, but he was a major leader of Vermont. Uh, when there was the Harriman affair, where Britain tried to get Vermont to come hang out and be a part of Great Britain, they uh, he was part of those kind of backhanded negotiations, which not to make him sound bad, Vermont was basically playing Britain and America off each other because they wanted to be an American state it, despite having declared themselves an independent nation. Ira Allen then goes on to help found the University of Virginia. He's a humongous, probably more important to the founding of, I'm sorry, Vermont than his brother, more famous brother, Ethan Allen, actually was. But they were both uh, interesting uh, members of history. And time is up, and I see right answers over here. Yeah, July 2nd, which also happens to be my wonderful spouse's birthday. That had nothing to do with us getting married, I'm sure. <laughs> but yes, it was July 2nd, 1776, that they solemnly voted to abscond from the greatest empire the world had ever known in their perspectives and be their own nation, or separate nations, actually. And that is the date that John Adams thought would be celebrated with bombs, parades, and fireworks. Uh, when I say bombs, I mean like fireworks and, and fun things like that. Uh, it did not work out that way. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the next question, then uh, go on to that next comment, which is a related question. On what day was the Declaration of Independence first signed? Now, I say first signed because people would kind of straggle in later and say, can I still sign that? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. It's cool. No one cares. Go ahead. Uh, and it was during, uh, I'm not going to elaborate too much. <coughs> Excuse me. Drink some water. That's why we're keeping it short today. I still got a little tickle. Still in there, man. I'm still testing positive. I don't know how. I feel pretty much fine now, except, you know, when I talk too much, get all choked up on my words. Uh, I got it from a website called Tee Public. Now, Tee Public, there are many stores. I got this shirt from uh, War Wara Show. Cool. Very cool. I've seen Tee Public. Uh, I, I understand Tee Public. There's a... Uh, I've looked at a variety of different things uh, throughout time. Uh, August something. Plays with squirrels. <laughs> I love your name, dude. <laughs> Plays with squirrels. Maybe the second. Maybe... Well, see, what happened was on July 2nd, they voted for independence, and a few guys said, I'm not going to vote for that. And then 
the two days later, they approved the Declaration of Independence, and those guys were like, I don't want anything to do with this. Those people who did not support independence were quickly replaced by their states. And they waited a month for those their replacements to show up. And when those replacements showed up, they began signing on August 2nd, 1776. You're absolutely right. I'm really proud of you guys for knowing these dates. Like I said, though, people would trickle in. Uh, I forget who it was. Someone, uh, is it Thomas Mc... It might be Thomas McKean. I know someone from New Hampshire, I believe, shows up like a year and a half later and squeezes his name in. <laughs> like allegedly someone may have signed as late as 1781, but that is fairly questionable. With that being said, let's take a hard left turn and pop on over to the Declaration. Here we go. This is fun. It's all in good fun. We are going to see if we can name all of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. All you got to type in is a last name and I will magically make them appear in front of you. I will, let's say, eight minutes. You think it's been, two, you know, it's been two weeks, nine minutes on the clock. You guys, give me some names. They'll pop up. Oh, they'll actually pop up on this side for you. I should have my list over on this side. So it looks like I'm looking here. I keep looking this way, which I know is uncomfortable for viewers. I apologize that just the setup I have. Nick, throwing out with Johnny Hands over here. Starting out with Mr. Hancock, nice and big right up top. <laughs> Excuse me. Nick, oh, we got Adams, we got J Adams, and we got S Adams hanging out in there. Anyone else? Squirrels, who we got? Oh, squirrels, this is your first time. Do me a favor, one at a time, or you guys get way ahead of me. <laughs> so you need to take the time to type them on and hit enter in between just so I can breathe a little bit. Um, but yes, those are all names in what I consider the big six. Franklin uh, got the other Adams just now, and Tommy J, don't want to forget him. He wrote the Narn thing. Uh, okay, Nick with Mr. Gary, absolutely. Read, 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 read. R E A D. There he is. All right, Patrick Henry. Oh, squirrels, you don't, you can just do the last name. I appreciate that though. But yes, Patrick Henry, as we've discussed, his name should be here with the H's. And as we pointed out a few weeks ago, I'll remind you something very, um, Oh, no, Patrick Henry didn't sign the Declaration of Independence. I apologize. You got me there. Did he? Now I'm in my head. No, there's another family that signs it. Patrick Henry was there for the vote on independence, I believe, or he might have left just a little bit beforehand because he had to go lead the Virginia militia to throw off the royal governor. So he was there leading up to it, and a very important player leading up to it. But he, that's right. He, let me say this again. He was on his way to the Continental Congress when he turned around to go back and do some stuff. Now, you guys are throwing out names. Uh, we got Henry. We got With, not Wythe. With. George With. We got Hopkins. Just Hopkins. But if you add a little something at the end there, you got another name. That's a, that's what we call a hint. Wilson. Yes. Uh, as I was saying, we learned a few weeks ago that the most common first letter of a last name on the Declaration of Independence is actually the letter H. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten H's in there. Uh, yes, squirrels, we've got Caesar Rodney wouldn't have passed without his vote. Um, Mr. Rush, Dr. Rush, Dr. Benny. Yes, Nick, getting my hint, Hopkinson. All right, it looks like just the two of you. Some people are just watching along. That's okay. Watching to see if we do it. Let's 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 impress everyone. Paca, yes, for sure. In another sip. Excuse me, still got those tickles, man. That's why it's gonna be a little bit shorter than usual, but it's been so long since I've been live with you dudes. Excuse me. <laughs> and this is what I was afraid of, is talking too much. I'm usually ah, heart is correct. I usually am so good at talking. No problem. No big deal whatsoever. <laughs> this has been a while. Nick, coming up with Morris, we've got unrelated Robert Morris, the financier of the revolution, and Lewis Morris, a sibling of the Morris family. He had a brother who was there to vote for independence, uh, William. Oh, no, sorry. That's not the Morris family. That's another family. Starts with an L, if you're interested. <laughs> um, 
another major New York family involved in the whole thing. He has a brother, Lewis Morris has a brother, Governor Morris, who would go on to be uh, one of the primary authors, literally the penman of the United States Constitution. Yes, Nick, you got it. I almost said it out loud. Did I say it out loud? It was Livingston. Um, Philip Livingston, one of the older brothers of the New York family who had been around forever. He was at the uh, Franklin's Albany Conference in 1754. He was at the uh, I, I, other conference. Audrey, yes, coming out with Lewis. I don't want to. I, I don't want to get off on of my stories and not and miss an answer. Yes, Francis Lewis, whose son Mor Morgan Lewis. What am I saying wrong? Yes, his son's name is Morgan Lewis, and his son would be governor of New York State, uh, and almost candidate for vice president at one point. Jennifer, Nick, Jennifer. So the name is not Jennifer. It is. Yes, it is. Wait, 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 wait. Daniel of Saint Thomas Jennifer. Oh, wrong document. Uh Dan, he signs the deck, the Constitution, I believe. His name is not on my list. I am gonna pull it up. <laughs> I am gonna make sure. <laughs> now I'm questioning myself. Daniel of saint thomas jennifer family no that's not what i want i just want him uh yes a signer of the constitution got it okay good you had me second guessing myself there that's how off my game i am i haven't read about the american revolution in two weeks for the first time in like 20 years <laughs> excuse me that is a fantastic guess nick yes pain uh, not the pain we were discussing before, Robert Treat Payne of Massachusetts, uh, a friend and colleague of the Adamses and the Hancocks. And I do believe we've gotten everyone from New ha uh, Massachusetts at this point. Let's see, who can I hint? There's the guy from Long Island. Always fun. There's the guy who's from a town that also bears his last name. That's always fun. Uh... There's one, someone said this name earlier, I think. No, maybe not. Okay, trying to figure out ways to give hints. I'm having, I'm having a rough go of it. Roger Sherman, Nick, of course there's Roger Sherman. He signed absolutely everything. He's always a correct answer in these games. <laughs> um, I've got a guy whose last name is a synonym for rock. Uh, there is... Uh, Dr. Benjamin Rush's stepfather, if you, or father-in-law, if you watched my uh, video on the blank Boudinot family relations, blank being the right answer. Uh, Gwinnett, Button Gwinnett, yes, Button Gwinnett has the most, the third most expensive signature in the world after, I think it's Caesar and Cleopatra, and then Button Gwinnett, because he died so quickly and people want to collect the signatures uh, no, Boudinot is not a correct answer. That's why I said it out loud. But Boudinot was married to the sister of a guy who signed the declaration. And that guy was also the father-in-law of Dr. Benjamin Rush. Uh, McKean is a good answer. That is a correct answer. It is not the one we're looking for. I actually almost made this guy a trivia question tonight. Uh, his first name is Richard. I'll give you that. Richard. Uh, yes, Carol. Charles Carroll of Carrollton. That's the guy of the town. <laughs> Hints I was giving before. Um, oh, there's two brothers. There are two brothers that signed the document whose names we have not said yet. Uh, one of them is one of the most famous names of the revolution. They also had two other brothers, uh, four brothers, five brothers, technically. Uh, two of them were foreign diplomats for most of the revolution. Guy whose name is synonymous with hanging. Again, a guy whose name is synonymous with rock or pebble. <laughs> um, excuse me, guys. I'm having trouble keeping up the talking. At least I feel good. I might be choking on my words, but at least I feel good. <clears throat> I'm having a lot of difficulty not coughing right into the microphone. I apologize. Uh, Hale, 
Squirrels, that is a great guess. That they Nathan Hale uh, uh, was hung well before they signed the Declaration of Independence. Sadly, the worst spy of all time. Literally was a spy for two weeks and was dead. Sorry to offend you, but the truth often hurts. And with that, we have five seconds left. It's not bad for a few weeks back. Not bad for a few weeks off. And, uh, you know, we got a few new players. Uh, Nick carrying the carrying the heavy load there. That's that's amazing. Uh, let's see. What do we get? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and you know what? I'm a few ahead of you guys. I'm a few seconds ahead of you guys. So I'm going to count these last ones that came in. Uh, Harrison. Did we get him? Uh, where were we at? 25. Penn. Yes. 26. And there it is. Uh, uh, there it is, Audrey. Uh, Floyd. 27. From my old stomping ground. I like when we get William Floyd. I grew up very close to where he grew up. Okay, so 27 out of 56. So we're a little shy. But let's take a look at some of the names we missed. Uh, Josiah Bartlett from New Hampshire, who I like to remember because he is the was the namesake of the character on the West Wing. The president was named after him. Uh, Carter Braxton. I try and remember Tony Braxton. I know they're unrelated, or maybe not, actually. I don't know. Uh, but they were Braxtons were a major family in Virginia. Uh, Chase... Don't know how to help you remember Chase. Um, Abraham Clark of New Jersey. Uh, George Clymer, Pennsylvania. Uh, William Ellery of Rhode Island. He's fun because he's the one who sat there at the table and watched everyone sign the declaration to see how sad their faces were. Um, <clears throat> Paul uh, Hayward. I'm having trouble not coughing. I really apologize, guy. I thought I was ready. I thought I was ready. Uh, Hughes, uh, Hughes, I believe from Virginia. I'm not recalling. Uh, William Hooper. Samuel Huntington made a video on him not too long ago from Connecticut. He is a really important guy when it comes to Connecticut and the revolution at large. And then Virginia families. We've got F.L. Lee and R. H. Lee, Robert Hanson Harrison and Francis. I'm sorry, Robert Henry Lee and Francis Lightfoot Lee. Robert Hanson Harrison is not on this document, but a very important guy. Uh, Robert Henry Lee. Richard Henry Lee and Francis Lightfoot Lee, the only siblings to sign the declaration. They also had brothers William and Arthur who were over in uh, Europe acting as diplomats even at this early stage of the revolution. Uh, Thomas Lynch Jr., uh, his father was also in Philadelphia but had a stroke. Jr. was sent to replace Sr. Unfortunately, Sr. could not make it around the corner to sign the declaration. They would have been the only actual father-son team to have signed the declaration and they were so close. Arthur Middleton was sent to replace his father, Henry Middleton, who was at the First Continental Congress and not as revolutionary. Uh, Morton, Morton Salt, I don't remember, I know I have a, from, um, from Pennsylvania, I don't know how to remember him any better. Uh, Thomas Nelson Jr., also another uh, early patriot. George Ross, a relative, I, I believe like an uncle removed or something like that from Betsy Ross. Also an important leader of Pennsylvania society, uh, Rutledge, Thomas Rutledge, who had just replaced his brother, John Rutledge. John had gone back to take over South Carolina um, as governor. Smith from Pennsylvania, easiest name ever. Stockton was the hint I was trying to give before. Uh, uh, Richard Stockton was the father-in-law of fellow signer, Dr. Benjamin Rush. Uh, Stone, I was saying like hints, synonymous with rock or pebble that's the name i was trying to get at uh george taylor the only in, uh, indentured servant to make his way up in society and sign the declaration thornton from new hampshire walton from connecticut oh no uh, george walton from georgia one of the georgia delegates his brother was also important down in georgia uh william whipple i talk about the whipple family a lot john witherspoon the president of princeton uh uh, William Williams, one of those amazing names in the history of the world. Oliver Wolcott would also end up being really important to both Connecticut and the uh, United States in general. So that's who we missed this week. Let's get back to that trivia. Fun times, good times, great oldies. B-103, that was for you, Audrey. I don't know if they still play that on Long Island. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. So we need to reset our timer. Where is it? Okay, and while I reset the timer, I will read the questions. Who were the three 
signers of three signers, three authors of the Federalist Papers, known at the time as simply as the Federalist, but known historically as the Federalist Papers. Nick, you will get better because the more you do it, the better you get. Uh, I don't know if you how long you've been around. We used to play games like that on a website called Sporkle. Uh, which is a silly name, but if you go to Sporkle.com, you can do all sorts of trivia, including the signers of these documents, and that's a good way to help remember. Yes, B103. Yeah, uh, I'm very glad you get that. <laughs> it's just, it's a bit of part of my lingo for my entire life. Just, you know, when something's fun, good time, great oldies. B103. Nick coming through with some answers, and as time's running down, Plays with squirrels. Got two of them. Got two of them. Have you seen the play Hamilton? They do mention all three names actually in the play in the musical Hamilton. <laughs> but this last dude does not get a lot of play. And time's up. It is Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay. John Jay didn't write Alexander Hamilton write, wrote the first one. And then John Jay wrote the next five, I believe, in a row to start him off. And then Jay gets sick and doesn't write a lot. He ends up coming back and writes number 64 out of 85. And that's it. But uh, he gets that one last lick in there. But John Jay is an important member. And he is important to pushing the federal government. You know, there's a reason he's the first Chief Justice of the United States. And while at the same time acting Secretary of State while Thomas Jefferson is still overseas. Technically, John Jay is the first Secretary of State and... Uh, uh, Chief Justice, because he had been Minister of Foreign Affairs throughout the 1780s, when there was no federal government, where it was essentially a Continental Congress that never met and couldn't get anything done. Uh, John Jay as Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Robert Morris as Secretary of Finance and uh, Minister of the Navy, and uh, uh, Henry Knox, who was Secretary of War. That was the entirety of the federal government. Also, the Court of uh, the Court of Appeals in cases of capture, which was just like a court that decided when ships were taken at sea, who got the spoils. And that was just three people. There's really about six people running the entire federal federal government during the 1780s. I wonder how Hamilton got Madison and Jay on board writing the Federalists. That is interesting. Uh, I... So, okay, yeah, before we move on to the next question, I will I will respond to that. Madison and Hamilton were kind of working together from the outset. So when they went back to New York City and New York was like, no, this Constitution's stupid. We hate it. Uh, jo the Continental Congress was meeting in New York City at the time. So James Madison went back there anyway for Continental Congress. Alexander Hamilton went home. John Jay went there because he was living there and acting as Secretary of Foreign Affairs. And... First, Hamilton writes Caesar, which does not go over well. He essentially says, you'll take this government and you'll like it. And everyone's like, boo. And then he steps back and gets rid of the handle Caesar, brings on James Madison and John Jay. And Hamilton attempts to take a more um, democratic approach to say, instead of saying, you'll take this government and like it, say thank you. He says, here's why you might like this. Um, no, Hamilton does get a little testy throughout. I know we do, fed, I do readings every Tuesday of a Federalist paper. We read through it. If you're not familiar line by line of the Federalist papers, if you want to learn more about them, uh, and Hamilton does get a little angry at certain times during that, but James Madison, uh, also, uh, he has more of a, that kind of approach, more of a writing a doctoral thesis approach than a political pamphlet. Um, don't know how John Jay got brought on, but they were associates at the time and they had known each other a long time. It's interesting because Jay's not at, of the three, Jay is not at the constitutional convention. Uh, instead he is dealing with Spain. <laughs> okay. With that being said, we'll move on a little bit. Oh, we, every week I ask a not American revolution question. So we're going to step out of bounds a little bit though. This one's fairly related. Uh, Philadelphia. Why is Philadelphia known as the city of brotherly love? I'm, I looked this up the other day just because I was a little bit curious, never knew why, and now I know. So let's see if you guys can figure out why Philadelphia has the nickname City of Brotherly Love. Uh, I saw uh, that uh, 
while I was reading about it, I did read that Philadelphia is arguably the most hostile to outsiders <laughs> nowadays. So it doesn't really fit anymore, but we'll see. Well, this time period. I should to get into the Federalist Papers. So, I, you know what? Just check this out. On Tuesdays, I do these live videos. Uh, we are up to, like, number 27 or 28. So, we got doing one a week. We got a year left <laughs> before we get through. Uh, and and what, I, what I do with them is we literally go sentence by sentence through them to interpret the 18th century language to try and explain what they were talking about. Uh, recently, the last several papers have been Alexander Hamilton arguing for a strong standing army, and I forgot to put on the timer, and a national government that can do absolutely anything it wants to in order to uh, make any laws to strengthen and make a standing army, which I know people are not usually expecting. Was it because of play or a TV show? Uh, City of Brotherly Love. All right, so I put on the timer a little late, so I'm going to give this one up a little quick because it is difficult. It's actually simply the greek translation of philadelphia uh love in greek is philio and brother in greek is adelphus so philadelphus is love brother pretty simple i'm in this little box so i have to really bring my arms in to, to show my emotions pretty simple <laughs> bounded by the society of friends i it, it was primarily a quaker state i don't know were the was the penn family quakers yeah they had to be right I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, I know Pennsylvania is Penn's Woods, and he didn't... I forget what the original... Ah, I forget, but Penn didn't want to name it after himself. But because he took too long to come up with a name, the king essentially said, just write something down. It's Penn's Woods. Okay. And they wrote down Pennsylvania. All right, moving right along. Back to the American Revolution. Who is known as the Swamp Fox? The Swamp Fox. It's a great, it's a great name. Uh, this is primarily due to the uh, fighting in the swamps of the South, primarily South Carolina. Uh, using what was essentially guerrilla tactics. Before it was called guerrilla tactics, they would kind of hit and run the British from the, okay, hint, it's an American. <laughs> It, they would hit and run the British from a distance in the swamps and be able to move out of the swamps very quickly, which made it very difficult for the Americans to get there. It is funny, whenever I think about fighting in the Revolution or fighting back in the old timies, I always thought, hey, you know, oh man, there might be snakes and bears out there. But I always forget to think about, like, mucky swamps in the south. I don't know if the alligators come up that far. I don't think they come up that far, but probably some stuff in the swamps that you don't want to step on on accident. Although I'm sure there's people watching from South Carolina thinking I'm just a giant wuss. And hey, we have one black bear family around my house. <coughs> one of the nice sad things about the North is we've chased out most of the scary animals. <laughs> All right. And as time elapses, yes, you guys are getting Francis Marion. I always feel this is so funny. Francis Marion sounds like such a hoity toity high class name to me like you'd think one of the people one of the nobles hanging out with king arthur would have the name francis marion uh i guess that's a maid marion reference now subconsciously but you know what i mean it sounds like a nobility name but no that's the swamp fox killing it out there question number the ninth what state is valley forge located in now, this one might be super easy but it might not be so easy as you think even the devil himself could not catch this old fox well played nick well played was that is that a quote of his or is that from a movie <laughs> can never tell is that is it from the patriot i don't remember i don't remember everything like every cool quote that i know i've seen before but don't remember where i think is from the patriot <laughs> Oh, it's Cornwallis actually said that about him. That's how he gets the name. That's thank you, Nick. Killing us down there. Okay, we do get an answer. We got uh playing with squirrels. <laughs> it's a great name, man. I actually have a book, it's downstairs, that my mother in law gave me. I forget the name of it, but it's something along the lines of how to catch a squirrel. I should, I'll bring it. I'll bring it next week. You come for trivia next week. I'll bring the book. Uh and and show you just because it's funny. As time elapses, yes. It is Pennsylvania. 
I know this is kind of an easy question, but I wanted to put it out there because it so much of the fighting took place not far away in New Jersey that I thought maybe some people might not be sure. So I wanted to uh, confirm it for you. Yes, it is just north-ish of Philadelphia. I think it's it's north of Philadelphia now, but it might be like northwest-ish of Philadelphia then. Either way, uh, the British had taken Philadelphia, and essentially Washington camped in Valley Forge to watch them and hope for the best, basically, uh, after the failure at Germantown. And our last question of the evening. Who received Charles Cornwallis's sword after the Battle of Yorktown? Don't know why I capitalized sword. It's a noun, and they used to capitalize a lot more nouns back then than they do now. And I read a lot of their papers, so I sometimes capitalize nouns when they should not be capitalized and don't notice it till an hour later when I read it. Uh, oh, Nick Tarleton, that actually makes more sense because Tarleton was the one kind of put off to chase him. Because Marion did a lot more than fight on the sides there. He would hang out on the sides. Batman coming in with an answer. Hi, Batman. Welcome to the party. Uh... Uh, uh, Nathaniel Green split, essentially split the Southern Department in two, ran away, strategically retreated, uh, while Cornwallis followed him, and it was up to uh, the Swamp Fox, Francis Marion, to distract Tarleton, and they were the ones that were really kind of going at it for a while there. Uh, so yes, that makes a lot more sense that he's the one who said it. It makes sense you guys are getting Benjamin Lincoln. Benjamin Lincoln was the one of the early leaders of the Southern Department who was captured at uh savannah oh man anyone popping in now give me a break i just got over covid and my memory's failing me i can't remember if he was taken at charleston or savannah it must have been charleston he must have made it that far uh but either way he was captured during the war uh brought back held as a prisoner for a little bit gets out and charles cornwallis is a little crybaby butt about it and doesn't come out to surrender his army himself he's sick and George Washington was rightfully offended by this, that the commanding general did not come out to give him his sword himself, sent out a messenger, a, a lower level uh, general, to give the sword so Washington wouldn't accept it from him. And instead, Benjamin Lincoln is the man who accepts the surrender of the British army uh, to the uh, Patriots. At the same time, when they're leaving, I understand that the British soldiers who were now being taken prisoner in mass uh, wouldn't look at the Americans, they were looking at the French, because they were essentially gesturing to the French to give them credit for winning the battle. To be fair, without the French Navy popping in uh, and winning some strategic war warfare, wa water, water warfare, naval battles, then we wouldn't have won at Yorktown, and it would have drawn out for a longer time. But, that being said, Nick, Charleston, Nick, you are killing it today. Really appreciating the sport. Uh, my memory is more groggy than I anticipated. Man, it really got me, dude. Um, that being said, that is it. We have won trivia. You've all won uh, the hearts and minds of your fellow Americans. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, uh, I appreciate you sticking with me throughout this time. I have still testing positive, so I haven't gotten a haircut. I look absolutely terrible now that I've blown myself up. I'm really embarrassed. Uh, I feel fine, but like I said... Um, I, I thank you for coming with the algorithm the way it is. I'm surprised it told any of you I was going live. Uh, tomorrow, 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 I am having, uh, I'm not sure what to call it yet, but we're going to discuss America's most important revolutionary treasonists, aka traitors. It's fun. Number one is not who you think it is. Probably number two. Uh, but there are some really fun, interesting treason stories that we'll be going through tomorrow. I'll do it in a countdown style because, you know, that's fun. People like that. It's clickbaity. Um, it's John Burgoyne's birthday today. Happy birthday, loser. <laughs> Too soon? Am I kicking Am I kicking the, you know, I guess I shouldn't make fun of people who passed away centuries ago. Uh, I do feel better. Thank you. Love you guys, too. Uh, this is amazing. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're new here, especially if you popped in at the end. You missed it. We do it every week. We'll be back next week. Be back tomorrow with uh, the treason. And we'll be back on Tuesday with the Federalist Review. So I, I know we were discussing earlier, some of you were interested in learning more about the Federalist Papers. Every Tuesday, we do a read-along, go through line by line, 
figure out what they're saying with that 18th century language dissected and uh, learn a little bit about why they were supporting that constitution in the first place. Thank you guys so much. Jeremy, right at the end, I've already said goodbye, so I can't turn back now. Thank you so much. Nick with a good guess. Yeah. And I apologize, Jeremy, but hey, Jerry, tomorrow we are doing a uh, countdown of traitors. So come back for that. You guys are the best. I will be back tomorrow. Hopefully I'm, I, I, I don't have any more tickles in my throat. It's hard for me to say goodbye. It's hard for me to say goodbye. But I'm out of here. Uh, probably about 8.30 seems to be good for most people on the weekend. So thank you so much. Uh, whiz and good night.